Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Well, uh, settling in for a nice uh, long four-day weekend after, uh, you know, a busy oh. start to the year and it's good to, uh, you know, just uh, chill out for a bit and uh, just uh, get your headspace out. I've uh, Actually, we've got a nice 30-degree day um, over here today. So um, Same here, Ben. Same here. It's beautiful, <laughs> nice and hot. Yeah, so it's good. just nice to sort of squeeze this in and uh, then uh, go about our uh, business for the weekend and uh, and enjoy. Um, I guess, um, uh, although it's roughly a little bit longer than that now, um, uh, it's roughly the one-year anniversary since uh, the whole COVID thing uh, kind of hit Australia in particular. I think it was the third week of March where it got serious um, last year. Um, obviously, um, in terms of the global um uh, aspect um obviously the it started late 2019 but it i think even globally it was really march um 2020 when it really started to make its presence felt on a more global scale and i thought it was just you know a good time to just sort of check in on that and uh see how uh, how, how we're all going one year later um i guess um just as a starting point um you know we uh, in australia we just had uh, yet another lockdown in a state um, up in Queensland uh, because there was a scare with, uh, you know, some community transmission occurring and uh, Brisbane and uh, there was another council area, I think, that uh, went into a three-day hard lockdown through um, Easter plans into disarray like they did, I think, around Christmas time. Um, and, uh, you know, there was the usual, everyone's getting upset, um, probably the Byron Bay uh, Festival having to shut down. Um, uh, that caused a lot of angst as well. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's just a reminder that um, I guess these things, we're still not out of it yet. And um, I'm still getting a sense from uh, watching things. I was watching a, a piece from uh, the ABC a bit earlier about how they're trying to encourage people to get back into the Melbourne CBD because, you know, out of all the cities, I guess, uh, Melbourne had the, the biggest shock with the longest lockdown. And, the, you know, there's still a tentativeness to get people back into the city and whatnot. And they're looking at all these ideas and, you know, converting office space that's not never now going to be used into other things like social housing or um, artistic hubs or whatever it is that they're planning on doing. Um, and um, I think we're going to be, I think, you know, uh, there's like a sense that we're over it or can, can we just get over it but the thing is is that things have changed and we have to really start thinking differently about how we do things I think. Yeah, there's no question that last year has changed us and we've still got a long way to go. I mean, I think if you look at the global vaccination rollout as just an example and you can consider Australia within mm. that as well, the reality is is that even with the speed or maximum rollout, you know, potentially at the end of this year we could have everyone vaccinated. And if that's the case, then you're still looking at the start of 2022 before things would even start to come back to something that we might remember as normal. But I think after things go on this long, no one actually remembers what normal is. So, you know, I, I think there are big changes. I think there's certainly big changes around the way people interact and work, but I don't think we really know what they're going to be yet. There's certainly trends that suggesting some people are moving out of cities or, you know, there'll be a continuation at least in portion of work from home. Um, but I can't see the, certainly in Australia and, and probably the States as well, the, the sort of downtown or CBD model sort of uh, remaining un unaltered by this. Well, I can vouch for the fact that, you know, I had, you know, vivid memories of, you know, what, what it was like in the before times where, you know, like any given um, weekday morning, there would be, you know, just thousands of people, you know, for hours streaming out of uh, the train stations going around um, in the streets. Yes, it's gotten a little busier, but you don't, you just don't see vast volumes of people again coming out of those said train stations. That's usually the barometer for me about um, how much foot yeah. traffic's going around. And it just seems that, um, going to that work from home model that we were discussing that there's been sort of a um something snapped in the last year with um employers that said oh 
this can be done. It's something we can do. But yeah. not that there weren't employees that may not have understood that before, but I think it's more a, a broad acceptance that it uh, is something that can be done. And also the fact that, um, you know, that uh, big uh, organisations, companies, governments, whatever, when they um, have people working from home, they actually have seen that um, the staff are still productive when they're working from home or working remotely if, you know, they happen to be out somewhere or whatever and that they don't have to have a fear that, um, you know, people are slacking off because they can't eyeball them directly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, what's been personally interesting for myself and, and the environment in which I work in is we still have people now working from home, mostly one day a week, some two, um, but it's become normal. And I, I know that there are a lot of large employers who are saying, oh, we all got to come back in the office five days a week. But I just don't think it, it washes anymore because we have shown that, you know, you can work from home. The whole world, I mean, Australia aside, and but particularly Victoria, which had to prove itself in this 100-day lockdown, but across the world, I've got friends in, in uh, the UK who have been into work four days in the past 365. Hmm. And they haven't stopped working and they haven't been any less productive. So, I mean, there's certainly the argument that to build a team and to be part of a business and be successful, we need physical interactions and there's no doubt about that. But, you know, maybe four days in a year might be too few, but by the same token, there's nothing to suggest that five days a week would would make be, be an improvement either. Mm. I think the truth is somewhere in there is probably a three to four day at work a week sort of, uh, and that will change our cities. That will change the way we live. I mean, it, once that is, is maybe, you know, that that final 7.36 or eight hours, whatever you're working, you actually do over the three days of your weekend, mm. at two hours a day. Who knows? Uh, I think there'll be further knock-on shifts as we go. The other thing we've seen in work from home, of course, is that actually people are more productive because they're working longer hours. <laughs> and the irony, um, I'll, I'll just touch on this quickly, um, is that, um, you know, this talk about like shortening the actual work week while still, you know, t in order to make the hours more productive, you know, rather than forcing someone to sit at a desk for eight hours a day and they're not actually, they're only working for two really, even though they can visibly be seen at their desk. And the irony is that, you know, not all those hours may be needed as long as the, um, you know, the, the pay is kind of made equitable. But the thing is, is that the work from home model, because, you know, humans, we like to have a bit of variety and freshen things up a bit. If you're working in a couple of different places during the week, um, that might be enough to kind of, um, you know, just liven your um, or vitality or whatever, I guess, you're um, keeping things fresh. That's precisely my personal experience. So I work from home one day a week simply because it's easier. I would have to leave earlier anyway on those days, which means then that, you know, you still have two hours of commute, less time at work, you're more hassled and, you know, you don't really want to deal with trouble on those days. Working from home, uh, you know, allows you to engage more deeply with tasks and processes and it also allows you to be a little bit more patient, not just on that day, but actually across the rest of the week because you haven't had one day from hell somewhere in the middle. So, you know, if I was to, uh, you know, have my sort of way, I think that that extra day work from home, if you can do it, uh, radically improves your performance across the entire week and I would say even say go so far as to say it improves your relationship with uh, your colleagues as well. And not only that, I think it also has quality of life improvements because anecdotally people have told me that, you know, um, that then they didn't even really fully appreciate it until I guess COVID, the COVID pandemic forced it upon them with um, forcing them to work from home is that they actually have more time with the family at home, like kids or whatever. They um, they don't even, even just the daily pressures of say, getting up early, getting the kids ready for school, taking kids to school, then, you know, getting into the commute, um, into the office and then repeating the process at the end of the day and doing that every single day. The fact that they don't have to do that um, is um, uh, it's like a bit of a load off um, uh, and makes things a lot easier and it makes them concentrate better when they're working as well. Sure. 
for parents, uh, I think everyone everyone who's been a parent appreciates the, the pressure of the routine. And, yeah. um, you know, it, it's one of those things, you know, you probably only really suffer it for probably between five and ten years. And, and then once it's done, you forget it. <laughs> you kind of remember what it was like, but you forget it. So, But it, it, it's something I think that, you know, just makes people – better if they have that more flexibility and and irrespective of whether you're a parent or not having that flexibility in your life i think allows you to become a better person Mm. i think the other observation i'd make on the big changes is is just the use of video and virtual uh i guess community whether that's uh catching up uh like we have for a long time on scitech culture you know through skype whether it's uh celebrating uh international uh, birthdays with friends around the world or whether it's, uh, you know, the Oscars or the Emmys uh, broadcast uh, on, uh, you know, a a visual or a video, complete video platform with a live performance that is made specifically for remote audiences, Mm -hmm. remote discrete audiences. And I think that's been quite incredible. And I think that will actually continue to change our society and i expect these experiences uh of vodcasting of uh broadcasting via these platforms where there's interaction and a two-way potential for two-way even though most of the time it's turned off Mm. will uh actually like really take off in the next uh two to three years and it can even like uh you know things like uh conventions um uh, work conventions etc like i um, i mean i I was just thinking of like the apple events for instance they were limited to like five thousand developers that are that attended a hall um every year and uh now um they don't offer tickets because it's online and and it, it doesn't have to be just the developer as they, anyone can just sign in for free and have a look at it now because it's just beamed to you in your living room or uh, at your desk, which, uh, and I think that's a big change for, like if you were to multiply that out over various industries and when they do that. Absolutely, you know, and you see it, you know, time and time again, but I think what will happen is is because everybody joins a feed like that, uh what we're starting to see now is there'll be an opportunity for people to be picked out of that feed to contribute. Mm. And I think that'll open up a whole new means of uh, sort of, uh, I guess, video and entertainment. Mm, Absolutely. Another thing that kind of occurred to me, and we may have touched on this in previous years, um, but it's been, it was a constant topic that came up, uh, say using Melbourne as an example, that there was um, a concern around infrastructure and, um, you know, how do we get um, the trains working better? You know, there was worries about overcapacity with getting people into the city um, because of um, overcrowded trains and congested highways and all that sort of thing. And, it, and they were trying to figure out solutions to this. And ironically, um, this whole situation has led to a decrease in the amount of traffic of people coming in every day. And it may have been inadvertently solved um, for a while anyway, a problem of uh, bottlenecks of getting people in and out of uh, CBDs because there are less people overall coming in every single day um, to attend uh, the, the CBD. So from that perspective, you know, you don't have to, even if you're like living in Brunswick and you have to wait for the third tram to go past um, for it to have enough space for you to get on, even though it's, you know, only, you know, a 10-minute, you know, potential ride um, where you could have just walked in and it would have been quicker. Now that's no longer as an issue because there's less people coming in. Obviously, there are knock-on effects to that because there are a lot of businesses in the CBD that rely on all those people, like a lot of people coming in yeah. and spending money there. But, you know, yeah. it, it, good with the bad, I guess. Well, that's right. And, uh, you know, as I say, I don't think we can predict quite what's going to happen because there's whole layers of, uh, you know, change in this. So, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I think it'll change our transport model and it'll change our usage models and also our, uh, I guess, uh, models of, uh, cluster models of where people go, uh, mm. you know, people are probably more likely to go out to a park now than, uh, you know, a concrete mall. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Um, and I guess um, we, we uh, just to slowly wrap it up, I guess uh, we have to talk about the um, vaccines and their rollout. And obviously there's been a bit of talk about 
how things are going a little bit more slowly than expected. Um, I think there's been some um, outside influences on that, with uh, spe- especially with some vaccine supply deliveries to Australia, etc. Um, I guess we've been fortunate in that we haven't really had um, like sort of the level of COVID outbreaks that would need that sort of emergency sort of um, delivery of vaccines to as many people as possible. Um, but at the same time, it would be good, um, you know, to get people uh, vaccinated as quickly as we possibly can. But as we were saying at you know the outset it's going to take some time um and uh, people just need some patience with it i guess because um you know it's gonna you know pro- it'll probably go into next year and um you know you, you the 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 chances of normal whatever that is um I, and I, maybe that's just the okay maybe that's what it is it's like um People are not wanting to accept that things have changed. They think it's just like a temporary thing that we're, we have to get over so we can get back to what it was before and maybe that dawning realisation that, you know, life isn't really going to be exactly the same as what it was before still hasn't, the penny still hasn't dropped with that one. Uh, I completely agree. I think, you know, the biggest culprits here are our politicians who seem to think that because they ran a marketing campaign and said that uh, everyone would be vaccinated by October, that that's what should happen. Mm. And, you know, yeah, granted, they're, they're right, let's get vaccinated as quickly as possible. But, you know, once again, Australia is a, in a unique position where we've curbed international travel and effectively shut out the virus. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, we have zero infections, mm. you know. And once you do that, you take away the urgency. So politically, maybe there's a huge urgency. But if we're going to live in these little bubbles and they're going to shut us down every time someone has a sneeze, then, uh, you know, I don't think that's actually going to encourage anyone at all to get vaccinated, you know. And, and particularly, I don't think the supply is there. Mm. What they should be doing is just encouraging people, you know, along the lines of the vaccines here, you know, will take a longer time rather than a shorter time, but everyone will get done and, you know, there's no hurry. That's the other thing they've, they've you know, they've tried to panic us into getting, you know, 1A and 1B done, which granted once again must be done as quickly as possible, but mm. it doesn't mean anything to the rest of us you know, when we hear squabbling over that. So just do it quietly. Once you're finished, tell the rest of us to come down and get one at our convenience. Mm. I promise. I have my first shop by Christmas. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, all right, Steve. Uh, I guess um, it's been uh, it's been quite the year. We've uh, we've covered, um, you know, various aspects of this topic because we've I guess we've lived through it um, as well um, and, you know, sort of uh, commented on it and uh, seen how it's all gone. I, I think we'll we still have a, a bit more to go to talk about on this topic because I think um, there'll be more more to see and uh, maybe not so much in terms of the virus itself and the pandemic as such, but um, the the effects of it. I think we're transitioning potentially to a phase where we're going to start seeing what the longer term impacts are, and they'll be interesting to see. Uh, they will be fascinating. The world together will be different. Mm, absolutely all right so um don't forget our website scitechculture.com you can get all of our links and content there you can subscribe to our youtube and vimeo feeds our rss feeds as well and watch us on any and all of your devices and we greatly appreciate your visits to our website all right so that's it for this episode we'll catch you next time